Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you are enjoying different videos on my channel. Uh, so, uh, as part of this video, I'm going to discuss Spark UDF with an example. So, a lot of folks on my channel had requested that uh, uh, you know if I use code to explain different concepts, then it will be a lot more easier. So, uh, you know, after uh, getting these tips from you, I am trying to. To write some code as part of this video uh, so I hope this will be more useful for you so let us first create data okay so first let us let us understand what is a UDF so UDF is a, a user defined function that's the full form of it so there are a lot of functions which are already defined in spark which can help you do any basic uh, thing uh, for example if you want to trim a string uh, you have a call you have a table in which you have a name as column and uh, you want to uh, and th those names have a lot of uh, uh, spaces in front and end and you want to trim those names so you can use trim function or uh, you know you can convert the uh, name into uppercase if those uh, names are in smaller case but in lot of scenarios, a uh, lot of uh, uh, you know day-to-day -day activities, uh, you know any functionality, if you're trying to implement, you may find a situation where the function that you want to use in Spark SQL or in your Spark code that may not be provided by Spark. You may like to define that function so that you your code can use it and your code can look more uh, uh, simplified. So, uh, user-defined functions are used in that scenario. You can create your own functions to use in Spark code and to use in uh, Spark SQL also. So, in this uh, video, we'll see example of how to do it. So, uh, let us create some data first. So, we have uh, two columns, identifier and text. data is created now let us create a function <coughs> so here I'm creating a Scala function uh, which takes a string as input and returns a string and uh, it is converting that string into uppercase uh, you know the this function that I'm defining is very simple uh, so the purpose of keeping this function simple is to focus more on the process of creating a UDF rather than the functionality that we define in within the function. So, uh, you know, I hope this is okay with you folks. Uh, so, now let, let us create this function. Okay, now uh, since we have created the function, uh, uppercase function, uh, now we need to register it with Spark. So, you for that, you need to import this class org.apache.spark.sql.function.udf once it is imported you can register the function by just calling this udf and passing it the function that you are interested in this one. now we can use this function uh, within our code so here i am creating a new column uppercase and I'm using this function on text column cool. so I have created a new column uppercase and there are everything in that column is read from text column and converted into uppercase now let us try to use this uh, uppercase function in spark SQL for that we have to register our uh, data frame as a table or view in spark so that i have done now if i try to use it right away i'll face an error okay it says uppercase udf is not defined the function is neither registered in temporary functions or nor a permanent function registered in database so to use that function in Spark SQL, this is what we have to do. We have to do Spark.udf register and uh, give that function a name 
and pass the function definition, which is our uppercase F1. Cool. So now this function is registered with Spark SQL. We can also check the catalog of the functions. Cool. So uppercase function is what we dis defined, and uh, you can see uh, it is showing up in the catalog. So uh, you may see that there are a lot of null values here. So uh, this null null value says that this function. So if you are if you have ever defined uh, UDF in Java, then you know in Java you can define UDF in traditional way. Like uh, you know you need to extend the class UDF class. Uh, actually, there are 22 UDF classes in uh, Java. Uh, UDF zero, UDF one, UDF two, UDF three, and it goes up to UDF 22. Where one, two, three represents that how many arguments it can take as an input. So you can extend those classes in Java and define those functions, and then you can register those, those functions also as UDF. If you register those classes as uh, UDF functions, then the name of that class will show up here. So we have not taken the Java route, that's why it is showing up upper class, up, uh, showing up null here. So uh, now, since our function is registered as part of catalog, we can use that function in our Spark SQL. Good. So this is the output, uh, you know, very similar to what, but exactly same as uh, what we had done uh, above. So this is how UDFs are created in Spark. Uh, there are, uh, uh, lot of uh, things uh, why uh, you know when you create UDF there are a lot of things that you should consider if you are creating UDF in Python or if you are uh, uh, creating UDF in Spark the performance can be very different so I will cover this topic uh, as part of another video so you should uh, uh, you know you should avoid using too many of uh, UDF that's the bottom line that I wanted to say uh, explanation of that comment I will give in a different video so I hope you like this video uh, this video was useful for you if you have any doubts please post message in comment section I will be very happy to answer uh, your uh, uh, questions uh, thank you for watching my channel please share uh, this video and uh, uh, subscribe to my channel thank you